In this video, I'm going to show you all the useful animation effects and techniques to recreate the Black Widow title all in After Effects. I think there is a lot to learn from recreating work you admire. You can learn not only how they did something that you can apply in your own projects, but you can figure out why they've done that in the first place. The wonderful Black Widow opening was done by the design studio Perception. Its whole sequence is surprisingly dark for a Marvel property, and its main title reveal, although looking pretty simple, uses a lot of great effects and techniques that you can really use to add a lot of production value to your motion graphics. So let's get started recreating it. And this project file is available to download for free down in the description. We're starting in a 1920 by 1080 comp that is 24 frames per second. And I've started with a few elements in here. We've got a black solid for a background. We have two text layers and then the symbol, which is a shape layer in its own pre-composition so that you can adjust it or swap it out for another logo if you want. I'm also gonna drag in a composition from my project window, which is the original title sequence. So we can compare the two. And I'm just gonna shrink this down and pop this up in the corner. And for the record, I'm not saying this is exactly how they made their title sequence, but this is how I would go about it. And the typeface we're using is called Roboto Medium. It is the closest I could find to the original text that is available on Adobe Fonts. So if you've got a creative cloud, you've got access to it. And I've set the tracking all the way up to 500. So the characters are nicely separated. First, let's start with the text animation. We have random letters fading in to form the words and then fading back out again. And we're gonna animate that on using text animators. So let's open up the properties of our first text layer. And then where it says animate, we're gonna click on this arrow and select opacity. And we're gonna turn this opacity all the way down to 0%. And we're gonna animate it on using the range selector. So let's open this up. Might move our timeline up just a smidge as well so we can see more down here. Now working with range selectors and text animators can be a little bit tricky, but fear not, this one will be easy. So the range selector essentially decides which range of our characters is going to be affected by this animator. And this animator is our opacity set to 0%. So this is sort of selecting which of our characters are going to be invisible. At the moment, the start of our selector is 0%, which is this red line here on the left. And the end is 100%, this red line here on the right. So it is selecting all of them currently. If we increase the start, we can see the red line on the left move. And now only 50% of our characters are affected by this 0% opacity. So to animate them all on, we can keyframe this at the start at 0%. And then if we scrub through our timeline at around 10 frames is when all our text is visible in our reference. So we can pull that up to 100%. So the range of characters we've chosen to be selected to be 0% opaque and invisible starts at 100 and then shrinks to zero. And that's all the range selector does, but it can be a little bit tricky to get your head around how that works. But as just come on from left to right, how do we get them coming on randomly like they do in the example? Well, that is even easier. We can open up the advanced section of controls down here and just select randomize order and turn that from off to on. There, now we can just select the last keyframe, easy ease that with F9. So we'll ease into that property and the text on animation is done. Let's do the same at the end where it fades off. Let's keyframe the start property here again at 100. And then when they're all invisible, turn that down to zero there. And because all of these animation properties have nothing to do with our actual text, we can change what we've written in here and the animation will stay the same. This makes this the perfect way to animate repeated or templated text elements. But let's change that back. Now to apply that same animation to our second word, we can just select the animator and copy it with control C, select widow, drag our plate to the start and hit paste. And now the same keyframes and animation are applied to both of them. One thing you might notice is that the random letters appearing are in the same position. So to change that in our second word, we can open up the advanced properties and change the random seed to something else. So that way it's random pattern will be different. Now in our example, we can see our text is scaling up throughout the animation. So let's parent both of our text layers to the symbol, which is in the dead center of our comp. And let's keyframe its scale property going from 100 and then at the end of our comp to 104%. So everything will now scale up slowly, nice. Okay, now let's move on to adding some texture. But first, a quick mention of today's video sponsor, Zyro. Zyro is a website builder that is super beginner friendly. No coding or design skills are needed whatsoever. I've been building this site for Project Manticore, which is a collaborative animation project that I want to do regularly. And having a website makes it feel just a bit more legitimate. Simply by dragging and dropping, you're able to create a great looking website. There are hundreds of brilliantly designed templates for you to get started, but you can customize to your heart's content, which is really important to me as a designer. You won't feel limited. It has all the e-commerce tools you'd need, including a mobile app so you can quickly set up an online store to sell your nifty products, groovy merch, and start a creative empire all on your own. 
and it even has an AI heat map to show you what elements on your page are drawing the most attention. Also, AI tools to help remove backgrounds from your images, resize them, and upscale your images too. If you run into any issues on Zyro, just talk to their customer service. I'm talking about real human beings. No cyborgs, no hybrids, no reptilians. Humans giving you all the support you need 24-7. And the best part? Their unbeatable price. At less than $3 a month, Zyro is really the most affordable place to build your website. And if it looks great, and it's easy to use, it's a no-brainer. They also have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you don't take on any risks at all. Use my very special link in the description and the code Marriott to get three months free off a yearly plan. So use my link, use my code, and have a great time using Zyro. Now there's also a bit of a subtle texture on our text. And we can see that slightly if we zoom in, it's sort of like scan lines from some sort of display. And there's a few other subtle variations in this text as well. So let's add some texture over this. So we're going to do that by creating a new solid. It doesn't matter what color it is. And we're going to add to that solid the effect fractal noise which creates a random noisy pattern. Let's increase the contrast up from 100 to 200. Let's turn the brightness down a bit to minus 50. Open up the transform and increase the scale to 300. So it's a little larger. And then we're also gonna add the effect of Venetian blinds. This is a transition, so let's change the transition complete to 50%. So we'll create lines through all this texture. We don't want them going vertical, we want them horizontal. So let's rotate them 90 degrees. And we want to change their width from 20 all the way down to four. And then let's set this texture's blending mode from normal to multiply. So it goes over our text. And it's also a bit too sharp, so let's add a Gaussian blur effect to it as well and change the blur to four. So it's just a bit more subtle. So we've got a bit of texture and a bit more interesting look on our text. And in our example, we can see some areas are quite a bit darker. So we're gonna mimic that with another texture. So let's add a new solid again. Again, add some fractal noise. We can change it to blending mode from the start so we can see how it's gonna affect our text easier. And this has gone and darkened up some of our areas nicely, but let's again increase that scale. Let's pull that up to 300 again. Maybe increase the brightness of this one, just so a few paler areas come through as well. There, I think that's looking pretty good for our textures. Now for the symbol appearing on. Now in our example, it looks like it's just appearing on from the left, disappearing, and then coming back on, and then disappearing again. And we can do that all to this symbol comp using a mask. So it looks like this is the first frame it's visible. So let's trim it to this point and its end point looks to be here as well. So let's press Alt and right square bracket to trim the end to this point too. And then in the middle, we're gonna animate what's visible with a mask using our ellipse tool up here. And let's just drag a circle over this composition. And we want to hit F on our keyboard to bring up the feather property. And let's change that to 100 pixels. So that gives a nice gradient to the edge of our mask. Now this is a bit too big. So let's double click the mask and shrink this down. And we're gonna animate this using the mask path property. So at the very start, we are gonna keyframe it here. Let's zoom in, double click our mask and move it over to the left. And it looks like it's coming in from the bottom left here in our example. And then over a few frames, the mask seems to move over to the right, revealing the symbol for the first time. There's a few frames where it's dark. So let's copy that second keyframe we made and paste it again. Then it reveals a symbol again in the middle. So let's drag it over the middle. It holds that pose a bit. Let's move it maybe a little bit over to the left. And then for the last frame, only the very left edge is visible. All right, that doesn't look too bad. And we don't need to copy this exactly. If there's a few frames where it looks like not enough of the symbol is visible, we can double click and make a new keyframe and drag the mask back over so it's a bit more visible. There. Now onto the effects, which are gonna bring this all together. And we're gonna do all of those effects on a new adjustment layer. So let's go up to layer, new adjustment layer. And we are gonna name this effects because we always label our layers. And the first effect we are going to apply is a glow. Now we want to be pretty subtle with the glow. So let's increase the radius from 10 up to 100, but let's decrease the intensity from one to maybe 0.5. So it's a bit subtle, but the other effects will bring it out even more. Now the next most obvious thing is the color grade. Our text is looking a lot bluer in this example. So let's add the curves effect. And first let's go to the blue channel and increase the blue in the highlights. There, that's looking close. It has this looking a lot lighter though. So let's go back to the RGB channel and lower the highlights in here so there's no pure whites. And then our blues are also looking a tiny bit purple as well. So let's go to the red channel and take a bit of the red out of the highlights too. So there our blues match a whole lot closer. This does make our red way less saturated. So we're gonna fix that with the next effect, which is hue and saturation. And we're gonna select the color channel red and just increase the saturation way up to 90. 
and we're going to increase the lightness as well up to maybe 85 there they're looking pretty close now another thing that features in this title reveal is lots of blur at the start and at the end so let's add camera lens blur which is the rolls royce of blurs it is the nicest blur money can buy that is included in after effects but it does take a fair bit longer to render but our animation is only two seconds so i think we can handle it and you know we deserve it so let's start very blurry with a blur radius up to 10 pixels keep reading that at the very start and then at about half a second in it looks like we get our text to be its most clearest and let's take that down to one pixel blur radius we won't go down to zero because in our example it never gets fully clear there's always a slight bit of blur and that's an interesting choice don't feel as though everything on your screen needs to be crisp, even the most important elements. If they can get away with it on a massive Marvel movie, you can get away with it with your projects. It's okay to be blurry. Just don't use blur on everything to hide your mistakes. And then of course it gets blurry at the end. So we'll keyframe it at one pixel blurriness here. And then at the very last frame, pump that back up to 10. And then let's easy ease these middle keyframes with F9. There, nice and blurry, starting to look really close now. And the next thing we want to add is a subtle camera shake. And we're gonna do that by adding the effect transform. Now this gives our adjustment layer all the normal transform properties we're familiar with. And we're gonna animate the position and we're gonna add an expression on it. So let's alt or option click the stopwatch next to position. And we're gonna type in the very fun expression wiggle. And then in parentheses, we're gonna put two numbers separated by a comma. We're gonna put 12 and one. And these numbers are the frequency and the amplitude of the wiggle. So the frequency is how many times per second this value is gonna increase randomly. And the second number is the amplitude by how many pixels that value is going to change. So here, 12 times a second, the position is going to shift by up to one pixel. So this gives a very tiny subtle shake. You'll be able to see it more when I zoom in. And I really love this effect. It's less of a camera shake and more like film reel going through a projector. I love it. It just stops everything from being static on the screen. Now you might notice it shifting on the edges here and revealing our transparent background. So to fix that, we can just increase the scale by 1% and that'll cover any of those mistakes. And that is all of those effects done. Now to the light leaks we see in our example. The light leaks are these flashing bits of color. And these happen in a camera naturally when, I don't know, a bunch of light gets in there. I'm not a camera scientist. If you're industrious, you can search free light leaks online and I'm sure you can find a lot of them, but I'm gonna show you how to whip them up quickly and easily in After Effects. So let's create another new solid, call this one light leak red because it looks like we have red and blue light leaks the color doesn't matter and we're going to add a good old favorite effect fractal noise and we are also going to add the tint effect and map the whites to a pure red now we're only using this fractal noise to generate the subtlest of differences so we can take this complexity from six way down to one we want this to be as basic as possible we don't want it taking up any additional render time we are already being slogged by that camera lens blur let's turn the scale way up to 600 and let's turn the contrast down from 100 down to 50 and change the blending mode from normal to screen. There, so now we've got some soft red randomness covering our screen. But to animate it and control it, we are going to use a mask, same as we did on the symbol. So we'll grab our ellipse tool and just draw over this layer. Again, open up a feathering property with F on the keyboard, increase the mask's feather to 1000 pixels. So now it is really soft and we can double click and move it around. And this is what's going to mimic our light leak. Now, the reason we use fractal noise on this and not just a red solid or a red shape layer is because it would just be too smooth and too even and too clean. Here, we still got a little bit of subtlety, a little bit of turbulence, a little bit of noise that makes it feel organic. So the first blast of light leaks lasts only about six frames, one quarter of a second. So this can be really quick. And I'm gonna zoom out at the start in our example, we can see this whole bunch of red on the right. So let's double click our mask, move it over to the right. And we're gonna keyframe the mask path property. On the next frame, it's pretty blank. So let's just move it almost all the way off screen. Now in the next frame, it's covering up almost everything. So let's drag it into the middle, maybe stretch it out. Now in the next frame, it is mainly blue, but there's a fair bit of purple on the right. So I'm gonna move maybe half of it onto the right. And when we add blue on top, it will make that nice purple color. Then on the next frame, it's all the way over on the left. I might squash down the mask as well. So it looks more like a line. And then on the next frame, just on the top right, and then it's gone. So let's trim our light leak layer here with Alt right square bracket. And let's see how that looks. All right, it's quick. You blink and you miss it, but it looks like a light leak. And the reason I'm copying this example frame by frame, it's not necessarily because the way this light leak works at the beginning of this title reveal is the best way to do a light leak. 
I'm mimicking this one mainly because they probably used a real organic light leak reference. And by referencing some organic movement, it'll make our artificial one layer After Effects light leak look a bit more organic. So we can duplicate this light leak and place it anywhere later in our composition. And it still should feel pretty natural. So I think it works here. I think it looks pretty good. But let's get rid of that for now. And we are going to create a blue version. So let's duplicate this layer. We're going to change its title first to light leak blue and change the color of that layer again, of course, and change the tint from that red to a nice bright blue. And we also want to change the random seed. So let's open up evolution option in our fractal noise properties and just change the random seed to something else. So we don't give away our digital randomness as being the same on both layers. There, now let's get rid of all but one of these keyframes. And it looks like our blue light leak starts here. So let's keyframe the mask in a similar position here. Then on the next frame, covering up pretty much everything. And this blue might be a bit too intense. So we could turn this down a touch. Then on the next frame, it's roughly up here and then it's gone. So that one, just three frames. And then we have our opening light leaks. In the middle of our animation, in our example, we have a bit of a slower blue light leak in the top left corner. So for that, we can duplicate this blue light leak and we're gonna animate it over a longer period. So in the first keyframe, just have it off screen on the left and then where it's strongest, drag it in a little further and then a little bit later, drag it off maybe somewhere slightly different than where it starts. So now we've got the blue coming in and leaving a little bit slower. This is probably a bit too bright, so let's open up its opacity and maybe turn it down to 50%. There. Now for the light leaks at the end, we're gonna do the same process. Duplicate one red and one blue and keep from our mask so it matches our reference. But that's only if you wanna get super precise. You could even just reuse the same one from the start and no one's really gonna know the difference. There, light leaks done. Now in our example, you can see there is a few light leaks in the middle that are barely perceptible around the edges. For that, we could recreate them with these light leaks or we'll drag in some free one that we downloaded from the internet and turn its opacity all the way down to 5% just so there's some really subtle color variation going on in the background. And the very last thing to do is add a new adjustment layer on the top of everything, add the effect noise, and give it about 10%, maybe a bit lower if you're feeling cautious, but I like things noisy. There we have it, and in barely any time at all, we've created an almost frame-for-frame -frame remake of the Black Widow title reveal. And of course, all our text animation is procedural, so we can go in and change it. And in one second, we've done the title sequence for the sequel. Again, you can download this project file for free down in the description, so go and have some fun with it. This is also the last time that I get to tease my upcoming advanced animation course, which is coming out in just two weeks. So sign up to my newsletter to be the first to know and secure all the bonus content available for the first semester. Link in the description. Thanks again to Zyro for sponsoring this video. Check the link in the description to get three months off an annual plan. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.